Okay, uh, hello Tampere. Um, uh, just a small warning before I start. Uh, I just yesterday uh, came back from a military rehearsal training, so I might speak quite loud here today, but other than that, uh, hopefully you all enjoy. Uh, yeah, uh, it's my third time uh, uh, speaking at uh, this conference. Uh, um, I have uh, quite a lot of experience on uh, organizing conferences myself too, so I know pretty well that it requires a hell of a lot of work to organize this kind of uh, event. So I like to give a big applause for the Metos and Forks doing this again. <laughs> yeah, uh, this time I'm talking about distributed transducers. Uh, actually, this is just a nice name because transducers have a really nice brand. The thing uh, I have actually implemented is a distributed fold uh, using the Amazon Lambda technology. But let's see. So overall, uh, the goal uh, in this experiment that I've been doing is to get uh, more performance. Because I think the cool thing uh, with Clojure is that um, uh, I can ri write some uh, co uh, code, normal functions, and then uh, if I need more performance, if I want uh, the code to run faster, there are a lot of pretty easy ways uh, in Clojure that you can uh, do only small changes to your code and it actually runs a lot faster. So that's, that's the whole goal uh, in this experiment. Um, yeah, for this we need uh, some kind of a problem to solve uh, and I chose to have this kind of um, similar words um, uh, problem. So the idea is that given a word, uh, we can compare the word to a list of words and then uh, get a list of uh, words that look similar. So it, this works in a way, so um, this takes in, uh, it so starts with words and then we in here we have a function map that then uh, calculates the Levenstein distance uh, between the uh, given word and in this one word. The Levenstein distance, I just picked it up because uh, it happens to be one algorithm that I actually have used like uh, years ago in real uh, pro uh, project. The basically, the Levenstein distance just gives you a number. Uh, if you get, get one, then, uh, then it, the, the words are very similar to each other, and then if you get two, they are not that similar, and so on. So the next step is filter where we then filter out uh, uh, the words that we keep. We give the minimum distance, and then we filter out the words that are uh, less than equal of, of the distance. And the last, last part, uh, we use reduce, and as a reduct function, uh, we have this group by distance, uh, which is a function that will actually then um, group, yeah, it groups the, uh, uh, the results by uh, on, on key, and the key in, in results is, is then the actual uh, distance and, and it has set of uh, words. Uh, by the way, uh, as you can see, I'm not using this cool clips plugin, and this is just the old school way. There are two reasons for this. Uh, one thing is that uh, I'm an old fart, and I didn't know the clips plugin exists. And then, then also there is that reason that uh, actually this requires a JVM version of Clojure, most of the stuff that I'm using here. So unfortunately, Clips plugin cannot be used for this. So, so I have to show how it works like this. So if you call it with this, uh, uh, then, then it will give uh, Sword and Lord, they are only one distance from the word, and the card is with two distance, and then it has filtered out the cat, because I don't know what's the distance with that. Okay, uh, we can improve the performance of this code by uh, switching to a transducer version. So now in here, uh, we have the, the map and filter still here, but instead of using the old version of map uh, where we pass all the input items, we are using this one parameter version of of map and filter, which will return a transducer, and then with com, uh, com we compose them as a one uh, transducer, 
uh, which we run using this transduce, and we use the same uh, group by distance function uh, uh, as a reduct function. A again, uh, like uh, uh, we are now using the same functions we had, but we have just changed uh, things a bit. Um, unfortunately, uh, transducers themselves, they are not in, in closure core, you can, they are not run in parallel. So the next step to improve the performance is try to use uh, uh, the fold from closure core reducers package. The fold can uh, run, uh, run in parallel. And because it runs in parallel, there's one more thing you need. So um, the fold will uh, split um, uh, the input items uh, into chunks, by default uh, 512 items, and then it runs, uh, runs the reduce parallel with, with, with those chunks. So it, at some point it has to then combine the results uh, from, uh, from those different uh, reduce is run running in different threads. So the first parameter for fold is combine function. In this case, uh, we are just merging with concat the results. And as a reduct function, we use the cr uh, group by distance. And we cannot use the transducer uh, directly uh, for, for, for the input items, but instead of we use our folder that creates a full double uh, sequence out of, out of the transducer and the input items. So, so this again works. Uh, but now there's a catch or relate, related to problem uh, in our, uh, with what we are doing here. So the uh, fold, uh, parallel version of fold only runs the reduct function in parallel. And it happens to be, in this case, uh, the, this group by distance is very easy to calculate. But then the actual, uh, CPU heavy uh, calculation is in the Levenstein distance. So it's in the wrong place in a way that the thing that is running in parallel. So let's change uh, to a better fold. So again, same compound function, but now we are um, in this reduct function phase. Um, we are actually uh, using this transducer and calling it with the, with the this reduct function, which gives us a new transducer, which we can use here as a reduct function. And then, then now we have the parallel phase in, in the correct place. Okay, okay. Uh, <laughs> there's one more gotcha. So um, in closure core, the parallel fold works only with non-lazy sequences. So, so if it had happens to be a lazy sequence, the input items, then, then it will use the normal reduce. This is, I think this is a mm, bit nasty because it's pretty hard to see that it's actually doing it. It's documented, but, but you only notice it actually when you don't, you don't see all the CPUs running. So the uh, better version of, of this fault is to just force it, for example, with VEC, it, to force it to be, uh, that it evaluates it immediately. And uh, with this setup, uh, the results, uh, I've used this my laptop with dual core processor, and uh, I used as a dictionary the English dictionary words that uh, are from Linux distribution. There are about 100,000 words, uh, and with minimum distance two. And the normal version, the first one, it's uh, about uh, 175 seconds. Uh, transducer version is a bit faster, but. Um, so it really depends on what kind of algorithms you are uh, uh, writing. So sometimes uh, transducers get more uh, performance improvement, sometimes not. So they are a bit faster. But the parallel fold is, uh, I would say, it's um, remarkably faster. So it's definitely, if you want to this code to run faster, it's just you, choose, you cho should use the parallel fold version. Okay. So. That was actually the question I wanted to ask. So could we distribute the fold even more to get performance? So instead of using this one laptop, let's use the machines from the cloud. Uh, I chose to use Amazon Lambda service because I happen to know it pretty well. Uh, the, the main thing is it's basically a service for running your code. And the important thing is that it's running your code with no fixed costs. 
because uh, what, what we are trying to achieve here is that we want to run this algorithm and try if it's faster. We don't want to have a, a lot of uh, money going in and, and having a lot of servers with fixed costs for this. And, and, and then it's also not very transparent to use it. And we also need one w some way to uh, send data to the, the Lambda function running in cloud. So I'm using the Amazon uh, message, message queuing service, which is again, it's managed, managed service that has exactly the same uh, property that it doesn't have any fixed costs. Both of these services, uh, the pricing is based on how much you use them. If you don't use them at all, then it's zero cost. And it's very easy to, like, uh, when you have the setup, then start to use them. So, as an architecture, it looks like that. So, um, I have my laptop running, and it takes the input items, and again, it chunks them, and then it uh, makes, uh, messages to queue, so f I think 4,000 was a uh, chunk size for, for this exercise. I sent them all, all them very rapidly to input queue, and then I have a lot of lambdas running there, and the, all the lambdas are taking one uh, input item from the queue, then they will run in one machine somewhere in the cloud, the parallel fold, and then they will re uh, write the result to the out output queue, and then, then one lambda takes a new input and so on. And this uh, local machine uh, is then uh, working as an orchestration machine. Uh, it will then, it has to reorder the messages because the fold has to uh, have the same order. So, and, and the, when you are running things in parallel, the order is lost. But then the local uh, machine, the code here, will preserve the order. And it, it then runs the combined function and then everything just works, basically. A bit, bit more complex setup, but, but, but for, the, for the calling code, it's mostly transparent. Uh, there's a, a bit of uh, configuration for, for the Lambda. Uh, and I'm using uh, laning and plugging, lane CLJ Lambda, because I ha happen to pr be the maintainer of the plugin. So ba but basic, basically, what you, what you need to specify is that uh, the Lambda function itself it has just some entry point, so it's it's normal closure code. But for for it to work as a lam uh, Amazon Lambda function, you need a certain entry point, which is specified here, and then we specify some memory size for the for the instance, and then which region we want to use. Uh, this is Ireland, for example, and then it needs some uh, uh, access rights for the uh, for all the queues that it can read and write the queues and so on. But Overall, with, with this setup, th then we can run the, uh, this Lambda install, which will then build the uh, Uber jar, uh, set up all the Amazon stuff, and then upload uh, the code to cloud. Okay, uh, let's hope this works, if I have internet connection. Okay, um, so if we, First, start with this fold version. Let's let's take the most trivial example I can make up. Uh, let's use plus as a combined function, and then just stupid uh, uh, transducer, which, which we we use it with plus, and then range for example 100,000 or something like that. We can now run the code. It should give some result. So now let's l run this in a distributed way. So it's just default, which distributed fold, and then just specify uh, how many instances. So now we are running this code with two instances. And it might work. Let's, let's see. The overall, overall uh, this will take some time. It's now using my 4G connection, so. Result might my, 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 my come or not. The overall, uh, of course, um, running things in in cloud. Uh, if you do something simple as this, then it it's like uh, it's only. A pro by the way, it's probably not going to work this time. 
uh, I don't have error handling yet, so. It, the result might come, so let's, let's see in the end of the presentation. That's why I have most of stuff here, because I, I'm relying on the uh, internet connection. Th by the way, because this requires a pretty good internet connection to work well. It's sending quite a lot of data, and for this case, uh, with, with this phone, it might not work that well. Okay, uh, one minor thing. So what data we are sending via SQS? Uh, of course, we are sending a chunk of items to be processed, but we are also, as you see, uh, I want, wanted this to work in a very transparent way so that we can play around in REPL. So we actually, we have to also send the Reduct function uh, to the Lambda function and uh, via the SQS message. And the only way we can send these strings, so we have to have a way for serializing the, the functions. And if you look at the normal uh, closure core uh, function, it's the up upper example, uh, if you print, print it, it looks like object user evil, blah, 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 which is not anything that we can send, send uh, the, the, the lambda function. Fortunately, uh, there's a library called serializable.fn, which does some uh, macro tricks. Basically, it just wraps the function uh, and then, uh, oh, by the way, the here should be SFN, of course, sorry. There's a small mistake, as you might have if they are not live examples. But the idea is that it stores the original data in a meta metadata for function, and then it can use uh, it when it's printing it out. So with this setup, we get the whole string as it is. And then we can do this nasty thing. In a, this is running now in Lambda function that we use load string and then evaluate evaluate that code that we sent over wire to the lambda function and it just works it's a bit nasty but but it works okay um, uh, is there any sense of this uh, now this is like now that this is the last version of the example distributed fold it, the only difference here is that the we specify how many nodes we want to use. For example, in this case, 10 nodes. Um, and if you look at the results, uh, the Amazon Lambda with 10 nodes, it's only 40 seconds to uh, calculate this. And with 20 nodes, uh, it's about 28 seconds. I tried with uh, more, uh, more nodes, but it doesn't improve the performance anymore, probably because there's quite a lot of hassle in orchestrating in one laptop, like uh, tens of machines running running in the cloud, um, and if you think about the costs, uh, the ten nodes version uh, costs rough, roughly this one calculation, forty seconds. It's one cent, and then the twenty nodes version is two cents. So, and and this is this is also that if you have used all your free uh, monthly free uh, time, because Amazon gives you like. I don't know how much time to use freely per month. This, for example, doing this presentation, I have like I've been trying this a lot, and I haven't paid uh, anything yet. So this has been totally free. So, so it seems to uh, work pretty well. So uh, this is uh, the code is still in alpha state. So as you know, this there's like error handling uh, is missing. But um, it surely looks promising if you look at the results that you can actually get a lot of uh, performance improvement in certain cases. For example, this data science stuff or something like that. I see their possibilities. And um, let's put this way. If somebody is interested in this stuff, you can contact me. And, and uh, if there's like more interest and people maybe like there's a point on uh, making this as a real library. So as, as far, it's, it's not really usable yet. Um, so there's a lot of uh, corner cases that should be solved and so on. But yeah, there are some links and then thanks.
Any questions? Um, uh, does it work with the uh, closure script? I've heard that uh, 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 starting up J JVM on, on Lambda takes a lot of time, and uh, people have been using uh, closure script for this. I to run it on, on, on Node, basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the implementation I've done uh, works uh, only in, in JVM, but you can run the uh, uh, you can run, run uh, Lambda functions with Node.js too. Um, there's like some uh, let, let's put this way. I've been using this quite a lot. Uh, there's some startup time cost, but if you're running something like 40 seconds, the JVM, uh, which, because it's running, for example, parallel fold is like 10 times faster or something like that in many, many cases. So if you're running something heavy, then, then uh, this JVM startup time, it's neglectable, the thing, because then the, the, that's the, wa the re whole reason that I implemented this in a way that uh, uh, I start the Lambda function immediately in the beginning, and it stays for the whole um, period of that time, and then JVM has some time to improve. So you can do that, but for these performance heavy things, the JVM still rocks. But then if you do the closure script version, you will be able to use clips. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> Okay, if there are no other questions, thank you, Margus. Thanks. So, uh